Man, it's good to see everybody. Hey, uh, know this. If you do not have a Bible, we have Bibles over there on the bookshelf. And if you don't own a Bible, man, that Bible is now yours. Amen. You also have Bibles on your phone. But uh, we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 6 as we've been going through the armor of God. And uh, we'll be camping out in verses 15 and 16. But, uh, man, let's pray. And uh, I'm going to give us a word. And then uh, we're going to grub afterwards. Amen. And, uh, and, and have a lot of fun stuff that we get to do. And, man, y'all are going to be blessed. You get to hear some, some really good music and a bunch of other stuff afterwards. But uh, let's pray. Lord, we come to you right now just thanking you and praising you. And God, I thank you for everyone who's here. I thank you for those who are still on their way, who are going to be getting to hear about the beauty of your gospel message and how much you love us, Lord. God, I thank you for those who are in their homes and drive by in the cars. They're going to be hearing uh, bits and pieces of the gospel, Lord. We ask that you penetrate their hearts. But, Lord, I, I particularly pray for all of us online and all of us who are here sitting in this service. Lord, I pray we would never be the same again as we hear about the gospel of peace, as we hear about the faith. Lord, that we would not be the same again when it comes to our battle against the enemy and against sin itself, Lord. God, I ask that you would save people today. I ask prodigals would come running back to you today, Lord. And I pray that we would be strengthened. Lord, speak through me now. No one needs to hear from me. Lord, we need a word from you. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, let, oh, right here in Ephesians 6, uh, I'm going to read verses 10 through uh, 16. and Because uh, we started off in verse 10 and now we're all the way down to verse 16. It says, finally, everyone say finally, be strong. Look at someone say, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on, everyone say, put on the whole armor of God. Some of us today, man, we, we, we came with some polluted clothes and we got to take them off, amen? That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against spiritual forces and evil in the heavenly places. Hey, the devil is our enemy, amen? The Democrat ain't your enemy. Republican's not your enemy. White, black, brown's not your enemy, amen? Therefore, take up, everyone say, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. How many of you know are the days we in are evil, folks? And having done all, to stand firm. Everyone say stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And as for shoes, everyone say shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Everyone say gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. Everyone say the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And all God's people said, family, as you heard, as some of y'all heard, uh, Brother Jared shared to us, man, over 500 years ago, uh, this monk named Martin Luther, the reformer, who Martin Luther, the king, would be named after, family, he, he was struggling. He, he, he was full of lust. He was trying to figure out how to overcome lust, how to overcome certain sins. And if you know his story, he would get a whip because he wasn't at peace. And he would whip his back thinking, and because the church would tell him, you, 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 you need penance, you need, a, you need to do this to yourself and do that. And, and maybe God will forgive you. Maybe you can earn salvation. If you would just give the church enough money, maybe you could earn your salvation. But it wasn't working. Martin Luther wasn't at peace until he read Romans chapter 1. In particular, a certain verse, Romans 116. Everyone say 116. Family, in that verse, it says, I'm not ashamed of the power of the gospel because it's the gospel, it's that justification in Christ, in faith that saves us. Amen. And it radically changed him. He would nail the 95 theses on the church doors, it would send his life into hiding and his family into hiding for the rest of his life. But family, the world would never be the same again because he would get the Bible into the common folk's hand. We the common folk. And he got the word of God into our hands where people could begin to see, hey, 
This is what the gospel really says, and it's all about Christ and Christ alone. Amen? And family, what he realized is there's only one hill that's worthy to die on. That's the hill of the gospel. Can I get an amen? Today we got people willing to die on many hills. I'm here to tell you there's only one hill I'm going to die on. That's the cross. That's the gospel message. And this is what Paul is saying right here in Ephesians 6.15. And as, and as for uh, your shoes, which go on your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Family, the gospel shoe of peace is offense. Some of that armor has been defense. But let me tell you something. When you put your shoes on, man, that's for offense. I put shoes on to walk. I put shoes on to run. When I played football, I put shoes on so that I could stand my ground and hold my ground when that dude came running. And and hopefully I would be the one knocking him backwards instead of me going backwards. Amen? We got to know this. The shoes are for offense. Family, hear me in this. We are called to go into the enemy's territory. Can I get an amen? Every single one of us. And we're to take back what belongs to the Lord. Can I get an amen? And that means seeing souls that were made in the image of God won back to God himself. These shoes are a reminder that we ourselves, we have switched sides by the grace of God. Can I get an amen? And family, let me tell you something. When you become a child of God, you switch sides. You're no longer a child of darkness, and the enemy is angry. He does not want anybody to switch sides. He wants everyone to burn in hell with him. And our mission is to make sure we can take as many people with us to heaven. Amen? And family, he does not want to see mankind at peace. And what's wrong with the world we live in? What's wrong with mankind? We're not at peace. It's why we run to drunkenness. It's why we'll run to orgies. It's why we run to, if I just had more money, we'll put our faith in ideology. We'll run to so many things but God trying to find this peace. And family, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3 tells us, man, that when we're born, we're child of darkness. We're sons and daughters of disobedience. That we are at war with God. Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 through 21, take it even deeper. That all of us are at war with God. Some of you are going, no, I'm not. If Christ ain't your Lord and Savior, you're at war. The Bible says you're hostile. That's why it says in Psalms 53, verse 1, the fool says there's no God. Because it's foolish to think you can find peace outside of God. That's impossible. You can't. Eddie Murphy himself. I remember seeing an interview uh, years ago, Jay Leno, give away my age. And Jay Leno's like, what's this I hear that you're not at peace, Eddie? That you're struggling, that you're, you're fighting depression. Like, you have all the women you could ever want. You have all the money you could ever want. You have all the power you could ever want. You know what Eddie said? And there's no peace inside of me, though, Jay. I'm empty. It's like there's a war going inside. I remember yelling at the TV, it's Jesus, Eddie, Jesus. Only he can bring that peace, amen? And family, that's the beautiful thing about this gospel of peace. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, one of the most powerful verses of all the Bible, says, but God, everyone say, but God, who is rich and full of grace and mercy, would choose to save sinners like us, amen, would choose to save his enemies. Why? So that we could be at peace with God. Then when we see the same thing in uh, Exodus, uh, many people miss this, but in Ephesians 6, Paul uses so much Old Testament. And right here in verse 15, he's going back to Exodus. It says in Exodus 12, 11, when, 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 the, when, when God says, hey, you got to put the blood of the lamb on the door. Because the angel of death, he's coming to bring war. And the only people he's going to make peace with are those who have the blood of the lamb on that door. So he says, put on. That put on is all the way back in Exodus. Put on that truth. Better better take a hold of that staff, and you better be ready as he p- comes and passes by. And family, if you know the story, those who did not have the blood of the lamb on their door, family, there was no peace in their homes. The only ones who saw peace were the ones who had the blood of the lamb on their doors. So let me do this. Come on up, brother. 
Y'all give him a hand. Come on up. Run up here. Come on. Because this is what Paul means when he says the gospel of peace. I want to give us a clear demonstration about the gospel of peace. Because when we're born, family, the Bible's clear. We're a child of darkness. We're covered in sin. And we're an enemy of God. But the word says what? But God. Everyone say, but God. So, family, the first point when it comes to the gospel of peace is God became one of us. You see, God saw we were all too messed up and jacked up. Like, there's not a single one of you that can ever become good enough on your own. Here's how messed up we are. That some of us right now, as I'm preaching, are going, well, I'm not as bad as that brother or that sister. You should see my homie at home. He's far worse than me. Because you see, family, only a messed up person would think that they're better than someone else. I know some of you are going, ouch, I just got stepped on because we got to see that. We're not better than anyone. Jesus is who makes us better, amen? And so God, looking down, realized you'll never be good enough. You can't. It's impossible. You're too messed up. Therefore, I will become one of you, amen? Why he was born of the virgin birth through Mary. He became one of us, wrapped himself in flesh so he could live among his own creation. Gave up first class so that we could live in first class. Family, we want to know that God, amen? And then point two of this gospel of peace, he lived that life we could not live. And here's what that means. How many of you would love to go back in time and just erase some things that you've done, some things you're ashamed of? Raise your hand. I got my hand up. If we're honest, we all would love to go back and go, woo, rewind, let me just <laughs> erase that part of my life. Family, that's the beautiful thing of the gospel, though. I don't have to look back at my life and live in regret or shame, amen, because Jesus did what I could not do. He walked where I could not walk, amen, and because he lived a life I couldn't live, I can now rejoice knowing it's not based on my perfection, but his perfection, amen. Point three of this gospel of peace He died the death we should have died, family. We are the ones who are sinners. We are the ones who rebelled. We're the ones who are hostile towards him. God's not hostile towards us. We're the ones who are hostile towards him and commit treason and grieve him. And yet, here's the beautiful thing about the gospel. It says, he who knew no sin, watch this, family, became our sin. So I'll... I'll be Jesus. So Jesus put sin on him. He nailed your sin to him. Don't think about what everybody else has done. Think about right now what you've done. He took your sin and he put it on him. And then you know what he did with you? Covered you in the blood. His blood. Why? So when the angel of death comes by, so that when God's wrath comes by, he sees He's the son of his blood. And you know what he does? He passes over. Why in the Jewish culture, they celebrate the Passover. That God's judgment passed over. Why? Because the blood of the lamb and Jesus, who is that lamb. Amen, family? And here's the beautiful thing. Jesus took our sin. You know what he did? He took it to the grave. And he took death to the grave with him. And he took the devil and the enemy to the grave with him, family. And he took flesh to the grave with him in the evil days with him. And guess what? He waged war while he was in that grave. He wasn't just chilling out. He was fighting for every single one of us, raging war. And guess what? When he rose from the dead, family, Jesus didn't rise up with sin. Amen? He rose up with sin under his feet. He crushed it, defeated it, defeated the devil. Amen? Defeated the evil days, defeated sin and flesh, all that's wicked. And he rose victorious and righteous. And guess what he did? Because going back to that verse, he who knew no sin became our sin. Why? So that we become the righteousness of God. Family, Jesus puts his righteousness on us. He took it off him, and he puts it on us. Why? So that we can fellowship again. Fist bump. Hang out. Be like, what's up, Jesus? He's like, what's up? And we can hang out and watch this so that when we stand before God on judgment day, God now looks at his brother and says, 
There's peace between us. There's no longer war. Devil, you have no accusation on this brother right here. Amen? And family, what we have to ask ourselves right now is, are you at peace with God? Because that's the only thing that matters. Are you at peace with Him? And then family, if we're at peace with Him, what are we doing to take this peace to everyone else? Amen? Family, Acts 1.8 says, we're to take the gospel where? Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Are we doing that? Are we going to people who don't look like us? Are we going to people who look crazy? And are we bringing them the gospel of peace? Here's what I mean. One time, back, back in the days, Westheimer's different now. But back in the days, when we would go preach on Westheimer, man, there was this brother who had a bat. He was bashing in cars or windows. I remember I'm telling the team I got, man, we need to cross the street and get away. He looks violent. I remember the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, go talk to him. I was like, no. Lord, I didn't come to die today. And I remember he spoke to me again, go talk to him. And I'm like, man, family, that brother needed peace. I was living in fear. I'm like, I'm going to get hit with a bat. I go walking up to him going, Jesus, I just not how I envisioned my death, but oh well. And as I walk up to him, I'll never forget, he looks right at me with this bat in his hand, angry, eyes red. And he goes, you're here to tell me about Jesus. I was like, okay, God, you're doing something. I'll never forget, he goes, you got five minutes. I was like, five minutes, Woo! I ain't got time to preach then. I mean, family, I, I think I was done in three minutes. I was terrified. He had a bat. I'll be honest. But I'll never forget, after I shared to him, he dropped a bat, fell on his knees, and said, how do I receive this Jesus? The cops showed up to arrest him. And you know what happened? The cops were like, what happened? He's at peace. I said, you don't need to handcuff him. They let me give him a Bible, pray for him. Two weeks, he got out, and he called me up and got in church. He needed peace. And what are we doing to take peace to people, family? Romans 10 talks about that. How will they know the gospel if we don't go to them? How will they know? It's not just my job. It's your job. And that's why it goes on to say, beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. I don't know about y'all. I love my wife, but she told me I had ugly feet. And I told her, well, babe, your issue's with Jesus. Because he said, my feet beautiful. Because I share Jesus. It says in Isaiah 52 as well, he who brings good news, beautiful are his feet. So you can look at your feet and you can go, mm, they're beautiful. And you can tell your spouse you can massage them because these feet are beautiful. They bring the gospel, amen? And family, we can never stop preaching this gospel to ourselves as well, though, amen? Because just as we are to proclaim that gospel, we have to preach it to ourselves. Look at someone and say, preach the gospel to yourself. Then when we fall down, we got to remind ourselves, I'm the righteousness of God, therefore I can get back up, amen? No matter how far I've fallen, I can run back to him. That's how you know you have the gospel. I remember one time this young cat told me, hey, man, I, don't, I, I can't be going to church no more at your church. I was like, why is that? Man, you, you preach gospel too much. Everything's gospel, gospel. And I was like, well, that's what it's all about. He goes, man, I got the gospel figured out. I need somebody who will take me past that gospel. I said, so you got the gospel figured out. I got it figured out, pastor. I said, all right, so when you sin, what do you do? Well, he goes, well, I don't read my Bible. I don't really pray. I wait until I think God is okay with me, and then I go back to the Bible. And I was like, you don't have the gospel figured out then. Because if you had it figured out, the moment you sin, you would run right back to Jesus, knowing that he'll forgive you right there on the spot. And say, let's get back up and let's get back in this war. Amen. That's knowing the gospel that, man, his grace is the only thing that can cleanse me and help me. Amen. And y'all give him a hand. Thank you very much. And so, family, Romans 16.20 says that God of peace will soon crush Satan under our feet. Can I get an amen? This is how you preach the gospel to yourself. Watch this. I want everybody to repeat after me. Everyone say, Romans. Let me hear you, Romans. 16.20. Says the God of peace will soon crush Satan under my feet. Let's do that again loud. I want the neighborhood to hear us. Romans 16.20 says, the God of peace will soon crush Satan 
underneath my feet. There's a song, you can go look it up. It's an old song, but it's good. And that's where I got that from. And family, that's what we've been called to do, amen? We are to run to the homes. We are to run to the taquerias and to the Starbucks and, and, and to the street corners and to the farthest parts of this world that we live in, and we are to bring them the peace of God, amen? Because the only way they can defeat the enemy. And then family, point two of this message, right here in verse 16. As this gorgeous weather keeps blowing my pages out here. It says this, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming darts in the evil one. And family, notice it says, take up. Everyone say, take up. It says, take up the shield of faith. How many of you woke up this morning and leaned over and grabbed that shield of faith and said, man, I'm ready, Jesus. Let's do this today. Because that's what it's saying. And it says, in all circumstances. So that means, man, when, when I feel like I don't want to be alive. When, when, when the whole world seems to be crushing in and falling in on me. Family, it means the good, the bad, and the ugly. I have that shield of faith. And watch this, family. Look at me. I'm ready. I'm ready. I, I, I'm, I'm alert. I'm not going to be asleep like Peter and James and John and be caught off guard. Man, I'm ready. Where are you coming at? Where are you coming at? And family, know that when Paul talks about this shield of faith, I, I, I like this shield. It looks dope because it's, you know, it's got the cross and it's red and silver. But family, it doesn't do justice to the Roman shield. If you know anything about the Roman shield, man, that shield was huge. It was like from the head all the way down to the feet. That shield wasn't just for defense. It was for offense. Then he was coming in, pow, I'm going to hit him with the shield. And family, that shield protected the entire body. When you look at the armor of God, that breastplate of righteousness only protects the chest. Then with the shield, it's protecting that breastplate of righteousness. It's pr protecting truth. It's protecting the gospel shoes. It's protecting the helmet of salvation. It protects your whole body plus the armor you have on. That's why in Hebrews 11.6, it says without faith, it's impossible to please God. I hear people tell me all the time, I want to please God, then walk in faith. Walk in faith, and you will please God every day, amen? And family, this faith that he talks about, it's important that we know what type of faith he's talking about here. He's talking about justification by faith. Everyone say justification by faith. Family is what Martin Luther, the reformer, what we celebrate today, went to war for. And guess what? Every other generation after him and before him has had to do the same. That's why Paul wrote Galatians. Justification by faith was under attack. The devil is always attacking Christ crucified and risen. Everyone say Christ crucified and risen. That's the gospel. That's what we die for. That's what we fight for. That's what we bleed for. We don't bleed over being a Baptist or a Methodist. Amen. We bleed and fight over Christ crucified and risen. That's what the enemy attacks. He's not afraid of the Baptists or the Methodists. But when you come at him with Christ crucified and risen, he's like, what do I do? Because family, he wants you to believe Jesus plus. He wants you to believe that his works alone cannot save you. That you've got to add to Christ crucified and risen. And that's happening right now in our culture. People are saying the gospel can't change the heart of people. It's the only thing that can change the heart of a racist. The only thing that can change the heart of a murderer. The only thing that can change the heart of the abortioner. Amen? Only the gospel. Why does Abby now fight against abortion? Because the gospel of peace changed her life. And she now holds that field of shape up. And we got to do the same thing. Amen? And family, he's also talking about faith in God's word. The enemy's always going to attack the word. What do you do with Adam and Eve? He attacked the word. When he came to Jesus, what did he do? He attacked the word. He tried to manipulate it, twist it. Well, we got to be standing on guard, having that shield of faith up. Because you know one of the things he'll do to twist the word? Do what your heart tells you. You know what the word of God says about your heart? It's wicked. It's deceitful. Do not trust it. Trust in God, amen. Have faith in God, amen. I tell, when I go speak in the prisons, I tell them, hey, I know many of you, how many of you were told to do what your heart told you, and they all raised their hand. That's why they're in there. They did what their heart told them. 
Don't fall into that lie of the enemy. We do what God says. Amen? And family, hear me in this. The devil and his demons, they're not just shooting one arrow. Many of us think, oh, man, he shot an arrow. He's done with me. No, he's not. He shoots that arrow, follow your heart. Oh, you didn't listen? Oh, suddenly, now you got ten coming right at you. Da, da, da. Ah, got him. Now he's following his heart, or she's following her heart. Family, he's shooting them every second. Don't think the devil's throwing the white flag up. He wants to destroy you. He wants to disqualify you. He wants to kill you, the Word of God says. And not just you, but your marriage and your children and everything around you. And will you rise up? And will you hold that shield of faith? Husbands, will you do that for your marriage? Will you do that for your children? Because that's what we're called to do, amen? And family, other ways that he comes at us with these arrows. My wife gave this to me, man. I wrote it down uh, as we were talking last night. If God really loved you, he would give you this or he would give you that. Hey, remember me? We used to be friends. Remember the good times? Look at what it's costing you to follow Jesus. Look at what I'll give you if you follow me. Come back to me. And family, we got to hold that field of shape, uh, faith up, amen? And remind ourselves, no, I'm now a child of God. I remember those days. Oh, my flesh might have loved it, but I brought harm to others. I brought hurt to others. It was destroying me. I rebuke you. You're a liar. No, my days are better with Christ no matter what it might cost me. Can I get an amen, family? Family, think about David. David one day said, man, I don't need to have the shield of faith up. Guys, you go to war. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to chill. Man, I'm going to go see what's happening up out here on the balcony. Bathsheba's out there. She's bathing. These are. I'm sure he tried to look away, but guess what? As he tried to look away, he didn't have the armor on. That flaming arrow hit him. Oh, Family, what would cost him afterwards? Cost him a child. Would cost him running from his kingdom. A son would rape his daughter. Another son would try to kill him. If you know the story, family, it cost him more than he could have ever imagined walking out on that balcony without the armor of God. He should have been out there fighting with the men. And it's why many of us come to church with arrows in us. Because we've taken that armor off. Or we'll come to church and we try to put that armor on to cover up the arrows, smile. And we leave church, we take that armor off, and we're just getting onslaughts. We got to keep that arrow. We got to keep that armor on and that shield of faith. And watch this. If I can get Paul and Stephen to come up, because the Lord gave me this as we get ready to close out. Just a, a really beautiful illustration. Because if you look right here at verse 16, you have your Bibles with you. It says this: the shield of faith, which you can extinguish. Everyone say extinguish. Family, the shield of faith extinguishes the fire on the arrows. So that by the time the arrows get close to you, they can't do anything. Why? Because you stood firm in Christ Jesus, crucified and risen. Because you stood firm in what the Word of God says. You said, no, I choose to abide in Christ. In Christ alone, amen? And so watch this. If we can. So the devil comes with a flaming torch. Because in our days, it's a flaming torch. And we like those days where he's struggling. To get the flame going. We want every day to be like that. Oh, there we go. You see how scary that sounds? We hear that, and instead of fearing God, we choose to fear the enemy or the things of this world or our flesh. And if we don't put it out... This is what it does. It begins to burn us up. And it begins to consume everything around us. But watch. Watch this. Watch what the shield of faith does. Woo! Come on now. Y'all see what the shield of faith does? It puts out the flames. And everybody look up here at me. 
Because the Lord showed this to me, showed this in my own life. It's what's happening with us. Family, we are either, we are either putting out the flames that the arrow shoots at us, or watch this, or we're extinguishing the Holy Ghost. And we cause him to leave us. Because we'd rather be consumed in the fire, consumed in the passions of our flesh. And family, all of you here got to ask yourselves right now, where do you stand? Are you consumed in the Holy Spirit? Walking in his power? Holding up the shield of faith? Or have you grieved him because you're letting the arrows just continue to hit you and, and, and take you away? Because it's one or the other, family. And family, once those arrows hit and we don't put it out, it causes a wildfire. But hear me on this because I love this as I was talking to Paul. Watch that. That's that wildfire. You see how you got to continue to have that faith? Because they try to come back and get you. The devil doesn't throw up the white flag. And watch this. Family, David allowed a wildfire in his life. Peter allowed a wildfire. Adam and Eve allowed a wildfire. Because they didn't put out the arrows. But family, watch this, because I know some of you are here, and you're going, well, what do I do? Because my family's on fire right now. My children, my life, it's on fire. Family, he asked that you have the faith the size of a mustard seed. Can I get an amen? I didn't bring a mustard seed because you wouldn't be able to see it. That's how tiny it is. He didn't ask the faith the size of a walnut. We'd all be in trouble. He said the size of a mustard seed. And so what many of us need to do right now who are consumed in that wildfire, who have been hit with the flaming arrows, you need to ask God to help your unbelief. What did the father do who had unbelief, who couldn't believe the power of the gospel to change his son and set him free of the demon? He said, Jesus, help my unbelief. And that's what some of you right now need to do because you know what happens when you start saying, help my unbelief? You, man, you cause the Holy Spirit to show up. Now you're holding that shield of faith, and now the fire begins to go out. It may not go out as fast as you want, but it starts going out, amen? Others of you, you're like Peter. You're walking on that water. You're like, woo, check me out. Now you're drowning because you took your eyes off of Jesus. You took your eyes off of Christ crucified and risen, and the waters are consuming you. And like Peter, you don't got time for a long prayer. You're going to die if you pray a long prayer. The only thing you can cry out is, Jesus, save me. That's exactly what some of y'all need to do right now. Save me. You know what he's going to do? He's going to stretch out his hand and he's going to save you. He's not asking you to beg him. He's not asking you to pray a long prayer. He's asking, do you recognize I'm the only one who can bring peace and calm your storm? If you'll cry out right now, he will save you on the spot. Can I get an amen? And family, as I close this out, let's stop talking. Hebrews 11, 13, says they died in the faith. Family, this shield of faith that we've been called to take up, we're called to die holding it up. Amen? Like, people should find us when we die, when we take that last breath, however it might be, they should find us with the shield attached to us. Amen, family? Thing that, man, this brother, this sister did not take the armor up. They never lost faith in Christ crucified and risen. Never lost faith in what the word of God said. And they died in the faith. You want that said over your life that you died in the faith. Let's bow our heads and let's go to prayer.